Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. It's Wednesday night, it's 9 o'clock and of course uh, this is what we do every Wednesday. We bring you Club Rugby on the show with me this evening and uh, it's great to have some some new guests in the world of Club Rugby. Although one of our guests uh, has been here before but we'll start off with one of our usual convicts who's managed to escape and, and give us a little bit more of his precious time. <laughs> the famous Morgan Newman. Hello Morgan. I said, James, I thought you were talking about Lyndon. That's why I wasn't, I wasn't ready for the... <laughs> <laughs> you weren't ready for the introduction. I wasn't ready for the introduction, yeah. could be of God. But yeah, good to be back on the show. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's what now? Season 26 or 7, so episode 26 or 7. So we're, yeah. going, we're going along strong. No, it is going along strong. But now that you have... Um, you know, just because somebody comes from St. George's doesn't mean, <laughs> and he's got the same hairstyle as you, doesn't mean that he's got, you know, the same um, record as you, so to speak. Lyndon Julie's a PR at, uh, I suppose, a PR, is that the right word still at uh, St. George's? I don't know. I just handle everything that they want to speak to or have relayed to media. Then they just uh, say it's me. And of course, so you're deeply involved in, 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 in writing and blogging and websites, all again about community sport and, and rugby. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So I, so I always um, spend time with, with uplifting community and getting out the, the yeah. info out there. Um, I, I'm hoping to get um, the same hairstyle as Morgan by oh. the end of by the end of uh, my 26 season. By the end of the show. Yeah, by the 20. Oh, by the end of the show. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope, I hope I get there. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then of course, um, and we're gonna, in fact, Linda, we're going to have a chat with you about some of the fundraising activities that, yeah. you know, the Club 100. We spoke to Feral Souls from yeah. St George. He spoke to me over the weekend. The guys were out there raising funds, and we're going to chat about that during the show. So yeah. I'm looking forward to, and I'm, I'm sure our fans as well are looking forward to talking about that. No lean, where stays it? No lean, looking very warm and cozy tonight. Night. Yes, thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Nice to be always back here. Do you know how much you have to come and ask me? No, I don't know if you come back here anymore. Come and say hello. Yeah, well, there's so much women's rugby going at the moment, you know, with yes. this. And we thought you'd be the perfect guest because the last few weeks the, there's been such a gap in the mm. fixture. But um, surprisingly, and I think a lot of people didn't realize, women's rugby played. We go right through. Right through. And, and that was a blessing for us because. We nearly had to say, uh, let's uh, not do the show for two, three weeks, four weeks, mm. because yes. everybody's on a break. So yeah. luckily we looked at the fixtures and we hang on, but the women are still playing, why aren't we focusing good. on that? So that's why you're here. Thanks. You know, and for men's rugby as well. Yeah, oh, we double cap. We double cap, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, folks, uh, so talking about the fact that the rugby does continue and there's still quite a lot coming up in the show this evening, we'll take a look at the results. There are more fixtures now starting this weekend. We're also going to take a, a, a look at uh, the magazine and what's in the, on, on the magazine and we'll take a look at the highlights in the match between Cryfontaine and Young Peoples. Luckily, that fixture took place last weekend, so we had a game to cover, which means we can talk about more about your passion, which is, of course, club rugby. Um, and that uh, Young People's Crawfontaine game was a previous game that had been rescheduled into this uh, weekend. So we were lucky enough to, um, to, to go and attend the match at Crawfontaine. Let's take a look at some of those results because I think a lot of people don't understand that the Reserve League continues, the Paul League carries on playing, the Women's League keeps on playing, and of course, as I said, that uh, uh, Crawfontaine game as well. Let's take a look at those results that did come up there. Now, it's uh, settling time now for the Paul region, and in the Paul region, we find ourselves in a situation that um, uh, Paul Rangers are in a, uh, in, a, in a not such a great position, 41-15 over... Um, or at least a 41-15 loss for Paul Rangers against Lower Paul. Young Standards, 22-20 over Violets Paul. Peril United, 29-36 loss for them against Riverstones. Vintmill United, uh, 9-40 loss against Young Gardens. Albions then um, going down to Simondium, 40 points to 30. Greifontaine, 29-22. This is now in Super League B. And then Helderberg uh, losing to or UCT Reserve side. So this is the Reserve League now. False Bay beating Goodwood, 36-5. Durbanville up against Villagers, 42-0 uh, in the Reserve League, that is. And then, of course, in the Women's League, Franschhoek Ladies. I don't think this game took place. In fact, uh, it was scheduled, um, Franschhoek Ladies against Kaya Mundi Ladies and Peniel Ladies against Milnerton Ladies, 22 15 win for the Peniel ladies over the Milnerton ladies. And uh, right, so folks, there you go. Those are the results then from the weekend. Let's uh, dig a little bit into that. Um, Morgs, uh, I don't think a lot of people, and, and Linda, you can also jump in here. I'm sure you, you're you well aware of some of the league structures. But the Paul region now fin has now finished its league structures, and now they start splitting into two, where you have a, a, a top two, uh, a top six, and a bottom six, because, of course, the Paul League has its own mm -hmm. structure, so to speak. Um, wh how do, what do you make of it now in terms of when you fall into those two structures, 
how much of a challenge is it now for you to realign yourself? You've just played 11 games. You've got to find a new sort of strategy for each club. What is the thinking going through the clubs now, uh, coaches? Um, look, I think, it's, I, think it's been, I think it's important, number one, that uh, we've seen the likes of Liverpool dominated for years and, you know, Vineyards and all these teams that dominate. It's now, I think, the two different leagues become a strength versus strength scenario. Yeah. So I think the teams in the lower division will be looking to pick up results of a team that they've maybe lost to in, in, the, in, the, in the weeks mm. that, that's gone by. And the likes of Lower Paul and Vineyards, who are often, you know, and Young Gardens, who are often pushing each other, will now be able to play strength versus strength for the next, uh, you know, I think it's three or four weeks. So I we think talk about that all the time, strength versus strength. But what does that mean for the for people out there who don't know the difference, don't know rugby terminology? Because quite frankly, I've always struggled with understanding that basic concept. People say strength versus strength. What is that like? Always making sure the best are playing against the best. Well, I think if, uh, it's a contentious issue. But to be brutally honest, I think it's you know. Um, with the, with the new format, we've seen a little bit of also that, that the teams that have come up that are the, the guy that was fifth in last year's Super League B is now playing against a guy that was number one in Super League A. And there's quite a big jump there. And I think that is where we lost that strength versus strength. Whereas in Super League A last year, and if you want to talk about last year, it was strength versus strength. So every week you knew you were going to go out, you were going to play a tough team, and the score was going to be, you know, you had to bring your A game. Whereas now, I think because so it's such a big gap, it's no longer strength versus strength, but more a case of. Teams, we see teams losing 60, 70 points in a weekend. But if we look at it just in terms of the theory of the competition, we talk about strength versus strength. If you look at the Curry Cup and you took, uh, what is it, 12 teams in the Curry Cup? Or mm. I can't even remember. Is it 12? How many teams? In the Curry? Anyway, you have, uh, if you had to put all those teams together in a pool, um, you'd end up with a strong team playing against a weak team. Now, they split the Curry Cup into a Curry Cup section and a, a, a league section, if, uh, if that's the name for the, for the lower part of the Curry Cup. Now, is well, that what first, it, division. First, first division? First division, 100%. So what it means is that the top teams in the Curry Cup are the better teams than in the first division. So is that what it means by strength well, versus strength? Well, in essence, yes. That's what it means. And it means now that the teams that are, that are so-called playing in the first division have got to prove themselves to show that they're worthy of being able to play against the, the best, if Premium. they want to be known yeah. as one the of the strong best. Teams. Yeah, one of the stronger teams. So we won't see big scores in the Curry Cup. We very seldom do. But had the Curry Cup been a bigger... 18-man team or whatever, or 18-log scenario, I think we'd see some big scores. So, so strength it fair versus to strength say will be young, young... Strong team versus strong team. If you want to call it that, but the, low, the, the weaker teams don't like to hear it that way. But then they're in a different... But now that they are being split, is yeah. what I'm saying, strength versus strength in terms of lower pole will play against vineyards and yeah, young, yeah, young gardens yeah. in the next three weeks. Whereas in the past, they play against vineyards now, mm -hmm. but there'll be a three or four-week break before they play another team that's extremely tough opposition. Okay, all right. All right, folks, I hope you got that. Um, <laughs> Lyndon, uh, what do you make of that, um, your opinion? Um, six, they yeah. get split now, six and six? Yeah, um, well, just if I can just add on to what Morgan is saying, um, um, the, in, in Super A, you see this, um, the strength versus strength or the, the, the huge difference that you see um, in terms of teams and on, if you look at the log. A team like NNK not having recorded a win this season, whereas last year they, they dominated Super B. Uh, a team like Brookside Villagers, for example, um, not not winning a, a game or getting high scores last season, um, where they where they are, are playing now, they are dominating. They're also one of the one of the five teams or five clubs in the in the league to be unbeaten. Um, so you you play against strength versus strength. So then your players' conditioning are on the same level or on par with who you are playing against. Mm -hmm. As Morgan said, um, then you have something to look forward to whereas if you have these these wide structures that still needs to um, ease out then you find that that these leagues will take a while before uh, NNK for example will be able to go out realistically to a um, sorry for picking on NNK yeah, it's just it's the first team that comes to mind <laughs> <laughs> sorry NNK guys I know Phil yeah, Frick yeah. is probably watching it's probably gonna count me for this but I mean then you get then you get that the NNK will realistically be able to go out to a Martis and say, okay, Martis have won the Varsity Cup, for example, but we can, we can take them. Uh, yeah. But that will only happen over time. Or you have, a, for example, like Red 3 Universals are dominating Super C. But when they do come up, oh, will they be able to match, a, for example, NNK coming down from Super A? Well, that, um, I mean, it, it, uh, 
doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I mean, let, exactly. let's not get too much into the what we're, the, the debate because yeah. I think we're going to be here all night long if we're going to be debating the merits of the system. But we do essentially understand that the Par League now is a, it's been split because yeah. they have to have their own structure. Otherwise, essentially, they would be finishing their rugby no. before the other yeah. teams, and then they've got no rugby in the pile. So they've got 12 teams. The other teams got 15. So for continuation purposes, they've got a different format there, yeah. and they normally have to get to a knockout yeah. scenario anyway so in the past we had the par league play through and then um uh, have to have a knockout phase because they're not going mm -hmm. up and they're not going down so that makes sense um nolene strengths versus strengths in the women's league not really needed um, no there's quite a competitive league believe it or not there's not one game that's going to be easy. yeah you've got one league and there's no going up and going you're down, now going down. <laughs> yeah. but it's uh, i think my girls also realized this weekend that we've had the first four games it was relatively easily yeah. we put big scores on and this weekend it was a tough but weekend. The, you, <laughs> Milneton of course played against the Penil ladies yes. and uh, I think you beat them what 22-15? No they beat us 22 They beat you 22-15. Yeah. Oh, 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 uh, oh. Of course and it was, it was, was it home ground for it you? It was home ground for us. And so yeah. you went down to Penil ladies. Now Penil ladies I've heard a lot of stuff about what's happening yeah. at, for, yes. with yeah. women's rugby yes. at Penil villages. Yeah. Yeah. Andrea, Andrea Mental is, is also a Western Province girl and she I know she's the drive behind yeah. those mm. goals. Yeah. And it makes a big difference. I mean, like, and also a lot of the, it's very weird because a lot of those goals play in the Western Province team. So now the two, now they're the getting against now the two yeah. nice today. But I mean, you know what that's all about, eh? Uh, yeah, it look, it's the four wide uh, lines. It comes to the four wide lines, yeah. I think. Eh? That's, <laughs> uh, the girls will know. So. That's for sure. Yeah, look, it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, the, the Springboks are even worse. I mean, the, the Springboks played a test against Scotland the one week, and the following week they're playing Stormers versus Sharks, which is yeah. the 15 of the, 15 15 of the 22 that yeah. they play against each other. So. And they're busy hammering each other, yeah. hammering tongs. Yeah, it's put up, yeah, but that's the old cliche of between the four wide lines. Yeah, before the all right, then uh, between the four white lines, it goes. We uh, went to Cryfontaine over the weekend and uh, they pulled off a victory over young people. So it was quite a tough game, I must say. Let's catch some of the highlights now in the match. Cryfontaine uh, against young people. It was a great game and luckily it was fantastic weather, which made the game even better. Let's check out what happened. Fantastic try there from the guys at um, Crawfontein. Good result, and uh, yeah, uh, quite a uh, after after the match. I must say, one of the, the conversations that we had was about the refereeing. Um, I just got to say that we do know that Western Province is making a big effort to to bring referees out there. But remember, folks, if you are going to um, think about um, criticizing the referee, this is an amateur sport. You know, <laughs> not every every referee is going to get it 100% right on the day. And I must say, I didn't think that things were that bad. But um, if you want to criticize the referee, then why don't you make an effort and 
bring some referees from your club as well to, to be part of the party, so to speak. But a good game there. A good game from um, uh, uh, Cryfontaine. And I must say, I was very impressed with the uh, young people's fans who came out in their droves. The bus came out there. and Anyway, so a, a, good, um, a good result for Cryfontaine. Um, Morgs, let me bring you into this, though. Cryfontaine have been... Um, in fact, uh, Lyndon, let me ask you, because you, yeah. I think you guys might even have played against Cryfontaine yeah, yeah, in the them. season. They've had yeah. a bit of a shocker. Shocker season. Yeah. They go out and they beat Slorians. Yeah. Um, I think they did They did quite a few of the clubs. Uh, I mean, Nolene, uh, we all watched that fixture. And I think that Saturday evening, uh, most of our clubs in Super B was away. off. And then, yeah, we were all blown away by it. And we were trying to find out and v validate the score and to check if it actually is that. And... You know, Cryfontaine, I saw a post today on uh, the, the chat zone where it says that the Salodians Navy train missed the bus or missed the stop at Cryfontaine <laughs> Station. <laughs> no one was on, on the train. So, I mean, uh, it's a big result for Cryfontaine. Uh, I mean, they've had a tough season yeah. uh, coming, up, coming up to that fixture. And I think also Salodians also had a wake-up call with that fixture. Because, well, it just goes you know, to show, I mean, you know. that maybe the strength versus strength thing isn't yeah. exactly what we think, eh? Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. 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 So out comes the Minos. T if you had to look at this as the World Cup, that'll be yeah. a, what we're saying is the Minos, and they're going to take 100 points. And out yeah. come this team, and they beat the, mm -hmm. the, the, the mighty monster on any day. So it just goes, it goes to show, again, the game can change any time. Yeah, if the bounce of the ball is, is, is happening, I mean, Scott's Dean nearly stopped the, the, the Navy train a few weeks prior yeah. to that game yeah. so I mean um, it was a matter of a gust of wind I believe the penalty of Scott's Dean was I on mean, its way and let's look at it from another perspective it's like Salorians has become the Manchester United of club rugby almost <laughs> yeah. and it's just the season just didn't work for them this yeah, year yeah yeah uh, but, I, but I still think that they're still a, they're still a very strong club oh, I look, mean, we're, they, uh, we're a long way from over yeah you know? exactly five five more they've got the go. players they've got the talent yeah. and I think uh, again Salorians you know, there won't be any surprise we see them out on top. Yeah, and I think and I think it's fitting that the final fixture of Super B is Salonians and Brookside Villager. I mean, that that's going to be one of the mm -hmm. biggest it's games. It's going to be a cracker. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going to be a cracker. Yeah, definitely. Um, don't know if we'll be able to go that game because we've already been the covered Villager. Salarians <laughs> and we've covered Villagers, which means I'm going to get in even more trouble if I don't go there. <laughs> Incidentally, um, uh, the, ga the fixture that we've been waiting for for a, for a long time and for, from both sets of fans and it's long overdue, is Eersterafir and Wraithby. Now, people from Wraithby have been asking us for a long time to come to Wraithby and, and cover a, 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 a game at Wraithby. And Eersterafir on the same side also have been saying, when are you going to come to Eersterafir? Well, here's our finally our chance now. It's a derby match. Lennon, you're from the neck of the woods. Yeah. Wraithby, Eersterafir, derby? Yeah, it's a big one. Um, there's, there's definitely no love lost between these two clubs. Players interchanging between, between them. Um, also, uh, Raithby are looking to to get the, the five points. They on a they on a roll there. Okay, well let's let's come to back back yeah. to that in a second yeah. because we want to focus more on Raithby and Eerste here. Yeah. Um, folks, we're going to take an ad break. When we come back, we're of course going to catch up with the captain and coaches um, and the man of the match of the uh, Cryfontaine versus Young People's game. Evox Advanced Nutrition are the protein specialists. Get down to Discam now and get the Evox 2.2 kilogram Synergy Whey Protein for only 459.95. Was 569.95. You save 110 rand. Get the Evox 3D T2 now 179.95. You save 30 rand. Evox Creatine HCL now 259.95 or buy three for 519.90. Available at a Discam near you while stocks last. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westerberg. Like the Tata Indigo Vista Ego from only triple nine per month and 72 months to pay. This includes a service, a roadside assistance plan, license, registration and number plates. Only at Tata Westerberg Brackenfell. SMS the words Vista Ego to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. So it was game day at Craftfontaine, Craftfontaine against young peoples. A lot of fans out there, a lot of young people's fans out there, a lot of Craftfontaine fans out there, and I think everybody just wanted to make sure that there was still rugby going on in the season. Uh, we managed to catch up first with the uh, winning captain of, um, at least the winning coach of Craftfontaine, a rather happy man, uh, Danny Kuchlenberg, but of course he did say that the season had a little bit to go and didn't say that this, and also said that the season didn't quite go the way that they wanted and that there was a little bit of a shift in the momentum but uh, let's hear what Tony has to say uh, straight from the horse's mouth so to speak
Ons is hier so vandag by Kraaifontein. Kraaifontein een beetje van een catch-up match gespeeld tegen Young Peoples. Samen met Dani Kroeglomberg, hij is die coach hier so by Kraaifontein. Dani, goeie oorwinning vir julle. Man, ons is blij vir die winning. Soos jy sê, ons het een beetje gesikkel in die begin. Hard gepraat, halftijd. En ek is blij die man het saamgestaan. Allemaal lekker saamgestaan en ons het allemaal deurgetrek. So, wel dan in die span. Dat is een beetje van een breek nou in die season. Een paar weke af, nou nog een paar weke. Het jylle een beetje momentum hier so verloor? Of het lyk my jylle het nogal die oorgekom? Man, soos jy kan sien, ja, ons het... Die breek is nie lekker nie. Dit is nooit lekker nie. Ou kom net op een haai, dan val jy weer. Het werd natuurlijk na die Salariens victory. Yes, na die Salariens victory was ons vergroot, haai gewees, afgewees, om weer die mannen by mekaar te kry. Ons is gelukkig. Oefening is baie goed en alles so. Ons is baie gelukkig om die mannen op baie hype te hou. En ja, ons speel nou volgende week Brakkeveld. Het is een groot duwe vir ons. Die mannen sien baie uit daarna. Het gaan een baie groot wedstrijd wees. En dan sit weer af. So, dit is nou maar soos die locks werke goed is. Ja, luister, wel gedaan. Het is een goeie oorwinning vir julle vandag. En good luck tegen Brakkeveld. Baie dankie. Dankie julle. Well done, Donnie. Good win there for Kraafontein. Um, but your season's not over yet, and we're going to look forward to see how you guys perform in the, the last couple of games. The winning captain there, Zander Kees, also a very happy man. Let's catch up with Zander. Hi, men. We're now here with Zander Kees. He's the captain here by Kraafontein. Zander, a nice win for you today. Yeah, I had to battle. I want to thank you very much for your time. We've played with you in the week. We've played with you in the week. We've played with you. We het reilig hard gespeel en die mannen hou nie op speel. So, dit is maar die liga werk en ek moet net al die ons um, ouwens dankie sê dat het reilig lekker geweest. Maar het lijkt my daar is julle nogal belangrijk om vir mekaar te speel as een span. Uh, ek meen, julle het nou nie so great seizoen gehad nie. Ek meen, die seizoen is nog nie oor nie. Ja. Maar dat julle so kan uh, julle, julle um, emotions optel en julle, julle game optel tegen bijvoorbeeld ons het voorheen genoem Salariens en nou ja. weer een tegen Young Peoples. Uh, dit, dit wees dat daar is een goeie geest. Ja nie, ons het die jaar gehad baie goed begin nie. Ons team kohesen denk ek was nie lekker nie. Ons het nou onlangs terecht gekom, ons is ons coach gesê, ons is ons nou op een haai, en het voel lekker, ons moet net nog harder werk, die seizoen is nog even bij nie. Ons ander wel gedaan, goeie oorwinning vir julle. Dankie. Lekker, Zander, well done there to the guys at Kraafontein. Ja, good result. Do you think Morg's momentum, this break, how do you keep the momentum up? Yeah, look, I think it's, it's for the teams doing badly, I think it's, uh, it's quite nice. It comes at the right time and, you know, it's sort of midway through the season for most of us. Not for Mullerton, but for the rest of us, it's <laughs> midway through the season. So if you're doing badly, it's nice. But if you're doing well, then it's often a case of you don't, you, to try and keep the momentum going, mm. or keep the guys hungry. Like Ish was saying last week, it's so difficult to get the guys under training. Some of them are fasting, some of them are, you know, taking a break. And three or four weeks away from rugby or any exercise, you come back a few kilos yeah, heavier. No, but yeah, you talk about that, about that break. Um, Nolene, how long are you guys still off for? Another, Another five weeks. Five weeks of no rugby. But what you've done in the meantime is you've organized some friendlies. We organized some friendlies yet. We're we actually playing Girls River this weekend um, for a friendly. Because they're also off and they need some. We test ourselves against the big boys. Do the fans know? The fans, because normally... For people to know what games are on, they'll go to the club rugby website and they'll see what fixtures are on and they'll That's go right. watch a game. That's right. Also, the fans at a club, yeah. generally in the beginning of the year, will know what their league fixtures are. Yeah, we now, those friendlies oh. are not documented anywhere. Yeah. They're not on the website. They're not publicized. Yeah. Do, the f do you find a way to tell your fans and your local yes, we members? Do, yeah. We either in the newspaper or um, we have very active Facebook page yeah. and, and also we've got an SMS system that we send a message out to the Come boys. Watch. Come and watch. Uh, we've got a, a SMS group uh, of players and then one is spectators and anything happening at the club, if there's a poker evening or if there's a golf day or whatever, yeah. we keep them updated. And you guys, I mean, you guys also organize a couple of friendlies and so yep. forth. Yeah, yeah we, we had a friendly um, scheduled against Raithby uh, two weeks back, but then their field was waterlogged. Uh, yes, and yeah. then, I was following this fixture coming up, so they had to make the call. The field wasn't going to be, be uh, going to be able to be playable this week. Yeah. So then they made the call to, to, to call the friendly off. So do you think it's just, uh, the Raithby field is going to be a little bit soggy this weekend? Um, it would be a bit wet underfoot, but it won't be soggy. Okay, um, um, remind me of that, because I've got to tell um, Sadiq, um, our... Uh, our um, runner, sidekick, cameraman, producer, editor, and everything. So I just got to make sure he doesn't bring his silver Nikes to the field. <laughs> um, anyway, we're, one of these days, we're going to get Sadiq a set of pair of gumboots. 
um, then it, you know, that's the one thing you don't do when you go to rugby is wear the brand new, yeah. brand new white Nikes. No. You know, yeah. did that the first time around. I had to learn it the hard Check way. Check for self. Check for self. In I fact, think the the one place that you don't go to is Solorian's. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, the one the feature last year where yeah. where. <laughs> I, I, I think I think it was was you that you ran. It was like it was mud all over. I mean, <laughs> there was mud. There yeah. was rain. There was we had to cover everything up. Oh, it was it was quite a it was quite a um, a messy affair. A, a, but a lot of fields are like that. Yeah. And, and in fact, if you know the ga the fields, you know where to run. <laughs> it was like a like yeah. a hard loop, you know, because we don't all have a Eddie Jacobs or Ishmael Dolly with a super sopper. You know, <laughs> but uh, Morgs, that uh, when you guys on that rainy weekend, I mean, you, one of your games was called off as well. You know, people think it's only the, the fields out mm. there that are not being uh, managed by the city of Cape Town or whatever. But mm. Hamilton's, I mean, if you guys played that day, someone would have drowned. Yeah, no, that picture was also under uh, a lot of water. And I mean, they tweet, people were tweeting about it. Nobody could believe it. So that game eventually got moved to the back of Hamilton's uh, onto the third field, field, in fact, yeah, C, C, C field. And we're unbeaten on the sea field, so we can move a few more games here this year, I think. <laughs> Are you unbeaten the season? Unbeaten the season so far, So yes, you're obviously it. unbeaten on the sea field? No, I mean, uh, overall. We like beat ever, Stella in there. the history ever? of the last 130 ever? years? 150, Jeff, so whatever 150, it is. 150, okay. 18, <laughs> 70, what's it? <laughs> I don't Morgan, know. Morgan Newman will never uh, let up on a chance to, um, to brag about Hamilton's results. All right, the bragging rights did not go to Young Peoples on the weekend, but nevertheless, it was still a great game, and Young Peoples are... Uh, Fans, as I said, had a, had a good jaw there um, supporting their team. We catch up now with the losing coach, Mario Haynes. <laughs> Folks, we're here at Crawfontaine, uh, Young Peoples against uh, Crawfontaine today. With me is Mario Haynes, he's the coach of Young Peoples. Uh, Mario, tough game today. Yes, definitely. We came here to take five points. Uh, it was a game of two halves. We came with a bang in the first, but I think with the forwards of them, they outrun us at the end of the game. And we, uh, were, they were mauling with us. We were trying, but I think uh, at the end of the day, the youngsters couldn't make it. Is it about composure? I mean, you really were dominating uh, in the, at least the first half hour of the game and went into the, the break uh, in, a, in a solid mood. Definitely. We have a lot of young players currently, and I think they couldn't absorb the pressure in the second half. But uh, the older ones who came up, I think they've done very well. But at the end of the day, the, the physicality of the game, they've beaten us in front, definitely. Well, I think you had the, the loudest fans here today. Yes, definitely. They travel all, uh, all the way with us. And we are very proud. This tiger here. Well, the all tira. the way. Yeah, the tira. We go there. And it's natural to come with tiger burgers. Say, tira here and tira there. No, we are the real tigers. <laughs> they are a younger club than us. Marius, listen, well done. Great cheers. And you guys are really fantastic. So, we'll, uh, we wish you guys best luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. We're going next week to Makassar and I think we will catch up there. Definitely, there's a lot of hard work, but we will get there. It's a tough game. Thank you. Definitely. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, Cape Rugby TV. Um, and of course, Mario Sainz there um, uh, didn't go their way. All right. Losing captain at uh, Young People's, Barry Williams. <laughs> Dit is samen met nou is die uh, kaptein van uh, Young Peoples, Barry Williams. Uh, Barry, jylle het hulle gehad in die begin van die eerste helft. Ja, JP, dit was een wedstrijd van twee halftes. Die eerste helft het ons baie goed, ons straks gehou. Ons het hulle op die achtervoet gehou, ons het ons, ons gameplay lekker uitgespeel. Tweede helft, bykie dinge tegen ons gegaan. Beslissings van die scheidsrechter. Sal ek jy altyd sê, hy soek maar net mens om foute te maak. Hulle het later ooran beginne kry, hulle het hulle wedstrijdplan goed benut om hulle om hulle balle na die lijn, staan, lijn te skop en in, in lijn staan, en daar is waar hulle vir ons rare waar oor donder het. Maar uh, jy praat nou so van die lijn staan, ek sal sê, uh, as ek so van die kant af ga kyk, ek weet jy het jy man gestaan in die voorhies, maar uh, jy het achterlijn loop hy balle nog nogal lekker. Ja, dit is maar al die jare, Young People's a sterk punt. Ja. Hy, 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 ons is baie lief om die balliekie hier rond te gooi. Kaapse ons rugby. Het, dat is definitief Kaapse perelse rugby. <laughs> ons het een paar jong manniekies achter ja. wat verskrikkelijk vinnig is. Hulle het vandag weer gewees dat hulle voor en toe nog groe dinge gaan vermag. Luister, beste vlak vir die rest van die, uh, van die liga. Daar is nog een paar games oor, die ding is nog nie oor. Dit is nog nie oor, jou sal maar net weer moet backbounce van die verloor af en opstaan op die oefenveld. Is, al, is die enigste plek waar ons hierdie foute kan recht maak en ons kyk weer voor en toe na die volgende wedstrijd, ja. Ons sien uit om vir julle te watch. Dankie, Barry. Dankie, JP. 
Yes, uh, folks, uh, uh, well done there, Barry. Um, as we said, uh, chin up and uh, good fans. Uh, of course, Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Now, on a weekly basis, we go out and we find a fantastic young player. This week at Cryfontaine, the man of the match was uh, Ronnie Swanepoel. Now, Ronnie was playing lock at, um, at uh, Cryfontaine, and he had an extremely good game. And what was really great about it was how the team themselves decided almost... Well, the coach, the team, and a few other guys decided who was going to be their man of the match. It wasn't just decided by any officials on the side of the field. Uh, Ronnie Swanepoel, the Evox Advanced Nutrition Man of the Match. All right, folks, uh, as usual, Evox Advanced Nutrition, the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Roms Rugby and the DHL Stormers, uh, gives away a Man of the Match prize at uh, one of our local club games. We give a solid mass, of course, today it was Cryfontaine against Young Peoples. And uh, today, uh, playing at lock, an outstanding game for uh, Evox Man of the Match, Ronnie Swanepoel. <laughs> Congratulations, Ronnie. Thanks, thanks. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's a, a bucket of Evox. We're still making a lot of camera. Yes, uh, yes. Nice to... Um, Lijkt me je boys is toch wel happy dat jij hier die prijs gekregen? Ja, nee, alles strijd. Weet je wat je geniet van het vat? Wel, alle wel natuurlijk iets kip was. Zonder in veel. Kijk hier zo, jij moet van camera kijken. Luister, lekker game, hè? Baie lekker. Baie tens, baie erg. Maar ons is bijgestaan. Ons is 80 minuten gehouden en ons het volledig gespeeld. Wat zou je zeggen als jullie sterkte is vandaag? Om bij met bij elkaar te staan. Om vast te staan en om niet touw op te gaan. Maar luister, weer eens wel gedaan. Jij is vandaag zijn Evox Man in de match. En, uh, ik weet, jullie slotten is zo'n kraaf en dan maak je een groot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Daar is zeker nog spieren op zijn. Dank je, ja, definitief. Yeah, Ronnie, well done there. The Evox Advanced Nutrition Man in the Match, of course, uh, wins a bucket of solid mass. Uh, solid mass. Uh, five kilos. Up for grabs if you would like to win this Evox Advanced Nutrition Bucket of Solid Mass, which helps you specifically pack on the mass off season. And uh, quite frankly, if you uh, need a high intake of protein so that you don't lose weight, then solid mass is what you're looking for. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supply to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. If you'd like to win this, SMS the answer to 33280. Just tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier. And you can win yourself a five kilogram bucket of Evox Solid Mass. Congratulations. Congratulations to last week's winner, Willy Engelbrecht. Uh, Willy is uh, the uh, winner last week. And also won for him, I think, a set of double tickets to go and win, watch the uh, Stormers against the Sharks. So there you go, folks. That's the number you need to text. So um, a solid mass, a uh, five kilos, 33280. That's the number you want to text. And uh, Willy Engelbrecht last week, Morgs, uh, went to go watch the Stormers up against the Sharks? Yes, he did. He was extremely chuffed. He was uh, sick all week, but uh, it wasn't going to keep him away from uh, a Newlands on Saturday. So. Uh, I'm sure you enjoyed the game. Yeah, of course, it didn't go the way that the Stormers would have liked it to. But nevertheless, we managed to catch up with the Stormers after the game. Um, yeah, it's the end of the season. And it's a real pity that we didn't have just a few more games as the Stormers were starting to, to find their form. Of course, Peter Grant is on his way. And Gio Aplon is on his way as well. Uh, we'll uh, catch up with the players as we go into the break. Very much. I got a long run today, so enjoying it very much. Even though we didn't get the, the result that we wanted, but it's nice to be in the field with the boys and joining some super rugby for a bit. Wow, the people are amazing down here. They came in numbers to watch their team. As I said earlier, unfortunately we couldn't give them the, the perfect result, but then they brought a solid vibe. They're always behind the team, and we thank for them. Man, they we tried to play for them, but we couldn't get the result. But we thank for that they came in numbers and came to support us. Uh, it's nice to be back in Newlands, uh, unfortunately for the loss. Uh, thank you to the fans that came out once again for uh, Bashi and, and Gio's last game. Uh, we wish them well for their future. Evox Advanced Nutrition are the protein specialists. Get down to Discam now and get the Evox 2.2 kg Synergy Whey Protein for only 459.95. Was 569.95, you save 110 Rand. Get the Evox 3D T2, now 179.95, you save 30 Rand. Evox Creatine HCL, now 259.95, or buy three for 519.90. Available at a Discam near you while stocks last. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Hi, I'm JP Nordia from K Rugby TV. 
Join me every Wednesday at 9pm for the latest on rugby in Western Province. We focus on club rugby with selected match highlights, great tries, top interviews, the latest logs, results and fixtures, fantastic competitions, social media and fan interaction. Join me and our panel of rugby experts. Escape Rugby TV finally brings local rugby to the masses. Escape Rugby TV every Wednesday night at 9pm right here on Cape Town TV. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Wisterberg, like the Tata Indigo Vista Ego, from only triple nine per month and 72 months to pay. This includes a service, a roadside assistance plan, license, registration and number plates. Only at Tata Wisterberg Brackenfell. SMS the words Vista Ego to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Welcome back, yes. Facebook, folks, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. That's uh, where you can find us on Facebook. And, of course, we wanted to know uh, last week, you would have seen we put out on Facebook, how many of you have got youth clubs? If you've got a youth club, please tell us. Just SMS us if you've got a youth club. If you've got any questions for the show as well, you can SMS us to 33280. The keyword is rugby, and we'll find out some of your questions there. All right, so, um, of course, one of the reasons we were asking about the fact whether you've got a youth club or don't have a youth club is the... Um, uh, is, is the fact that for the magazine, for the Cape Rugby TV magazine, we want to make sure that uh, we are focusing on the youth club. But there you see the folks, uh, the um, Cape Rugby magazine edition 10. It's fantastic to, um, to have another magazine out. The logs, the results, the fixtures, the stories, there's uh, player profiles, there's club profiles, there's youth profiles. And that's one of the reasons we asked on Facebook why uh, or if you at least have got a youth club. So let's quickly take a look now at the logs. Uh, we'll start off with Super League A to give you a heads up of positions as they are right now. In Super League A, it's Hamilton's on the top with 38 points. UCT, False Bay, Stellenbosch, Belha and SK Warmers. Now, of course, Hamilton's UCT, False Bay, um, uh, they have got a couple of games in hand over the likes of SK Warmers and Primrose. Um, and uh, shortly the universities will be back, so there's going to be a bit of a, a clash there. Morgs, you guys uh, are one of the very few Super League A games that are starting this week. It's Hamilton's against False Bay. False Bay is going to be a tough outfit. Yeah, look, it's, uh, uh, it's one, of the, one of the big derby games that Hamilton's have on their fixture list, and it's a massive, it's a massive fixture for us. I mean, it, you know, we're sitting at first position, and, and False Bay is sitting in third at the moment. So it's a, it's a big game to win, and, you know, it's a fight for Community Cup. There's a little bit of niggle in it. When it comes to, you know, Falls Bay and Hamilton's in terms of, you know, a little bit of chat and banter off the field. So it's going to be good, hard physical rugby, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, but if uh, Falls Bay don't uh, make it into the Community Cup, then probably most importantly, they're going to be able to play in the Community Challenge. Exactly. I mean, they've, they've proven now or that Or anybody in the top four. Exactly, the yeah. No, they've, they've proven that they definitely are one of the better or one of the top open clubs in, in So Super isn't League. it worth you guys maybe throwing the game so that you can play, rather play in the Community Challenge? Uh, we'll play in both, Jeff. We should probably go be, our second team is probably good enough to do both, isn't it? Would you like to play the yeah, Boston Cup as well? Yeah, <laughs> yeah why not? Though? <laughs> All right, then. Okay, everyone having a lot of fun here. Yeah. Super League B it is. Um, Villagers, Solarians, Milnerton, St. George's. Those are your top four teams at the moment. Peniel, Villagers, Hands and Hearts, Brackenfell. All right, Lyndon, let's bring you into the picture here. Um, unfortunately for Scottsdale, Young Peoples, Hamlets, Crawford and Goodwood, the guys are sitting a little bit at the bottom there. But if we look at the, the, those top four teams now, and we're going to get to those playoff stages pretty mm. soon as well. Yeah. Um, St. George's and Milnerton, uh, I've got the two, the two enemies <laughs> sitting right next to each other, St. George's and Milnerton. Um, St. George's, you guys still got a couple of games in hand. Milnerton's played 11 games. Yeah. Um, Nolene, it's a bit of a struggle for you guys, but you can still make it into the top three. Mm. Yes, I know. You know. <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know. I, I, it's a very a debatable subject at the moment at the club because yeah. do we want to go up? <laughs> well, yeah, I think, I mean, that is a good question. Yeah. Do you want to be 15 or 13 or 14 mm -hmm. in, in a league or would you rather be in another league and be number one, two or three? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Bragging rights sounds, I don't know, Lyndon, what, what, are you guys... Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's your thoughts on we it? We had the same at the beginning or at the end of last year. We had the same in our planning session. Our coaches decided that we're going to go for top six at least. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go because we felt that we weren't ready, like Nolene just said now. But then at the players' camp, the players decided, no, we're going to go for, for Super A. So they took it on themselves. And then we as the executive and the coaches supported the players in this. And this is where we're at the moment. I mean, yeah. Cape Rugby, you guys um, rightly coined it, saying it's the prize, the prize package of the Super B. I mean, 
Oh, we would have I, never thought we, we'd be this far, you know. It's <laughs> easy. It's very easy for us to, from a TV point of view, to say these are the champions mm -hmm. in Super yeah. League A, Super League B, Super League C, mm -hmm. Premier League A, Premier League B, Division One. You know, you yeah. can easily pinpoint. And what's going to be interesting this year? And I th thought about this th just the other day: is that we, on a on an annual basis, go to the Western Province Rugby Annual Awards. Yeah. Yeah. Now those trophies go back. 100 odd years yes. yeah now but they've been engraved yes, premier right. league a yeah. premier, premier league, league b yeah. you've yeah. got the, the tigerberg suburban trophy yeah it's going to be interesting to see now what province is going to do with these trophies and how they allocate them because there's also another dimension of those old yeah. trophies you know faisal felt it has to bring the brasso out and polish <laughs> it for about four <laughs> weeks before yeah. and you've got two you've got two competitions now i mean after the league is done you've got the the top six as well within the the super league yeah. a b and c so uh, province have got another set of trophies to make for for that competition oh yeah of course well. yeah there's so going to be more trophies to give yeah. up and by the signs of things i'm thinking that a lot of teams may be wanting to finish in say the top six but may want to win the second the, the actual the second championship, championship. Yeah. Yeah. so they may not want to finish the top, <laughs> top two, two of yeah. the league yeah 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 so yeah. they may strategically not yeah. play their strongest players so they don't finish the top just like two Abel, of the league. Just like Abel's are going for the community challenge and not community but, cup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, but when it comes to the playoffs, they may bring out their top, their, their big dogs and then win the, the, the championship and not the league. Yeah. 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 The so there's quite a few angles here. Yeah. 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 You can walk away with two trophies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think at the end of the day, also one has to consider the fact of what, is the sponsors, what do the sponsors want? You know, yeah. do, they, do, they want um, do they want to sponsor a team that's sitting... Uh, 15, 14, 13 on a, on a log, yeah. or do they want to sponsor a team that sits first, second, third in a log? Yeah. Um, again, that's all the more reason why all clubs must pull every game together mm -hmm. as an event. Yeah. doesn't matter where you sit on the log, you've got to focus on your local fans, you've got to do your marketing, do your Facebook, do your websites, yeah. bring the whole picture together. I mean, Lyndon, you guys have never really, you know, I mean, of, of late, you're not known as the team who wins Super League B or Super League C no, or whatever, no. but you've got all the fans in the world. Yeah. And you've got the sponsors and the support and everything else that you need. But So you don't always need the title yeah. to have the fans. Yeah, no, we uh, just recently over the weekend, we had our, our uh, presidential induction uh, service um, at the... Um, at the church? At, at the St. John's Anglican Church in Strand, yeah. yeah. Um, that also, and then many of the guys there alluded to the fact that we need to... Um, we, we need to uh, focus on, each club needs to focus on what their strength is in. Uh, Milton's name, the club Milton's cl cl name You sent us a couple up. of pictures on that. Um, yeah. Is it the same? It's is the that same, the yeah, the one, Let's yeah. take a quick look yeah, there, folks. One. We've got a couple of photographs in from, um, in from St. George's. Of course, uh, there's the president. Um, Lyndon, guide us through this. Who's yeah. there with the president? Um, that is our, our uh, president of St. George's on the left-hand side. Um, we're standing next to Mr. Thurlow Wakefield there. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Stephen and John Josephs. And of course, there you've got your executive, Ruben Riffle, yeah. uh, the president, um, Gerald Njengele, Toby Titus, the former president of Western Province, and Zelt Marais, also a um, member of the, no, the vice is, president. That is Stephen Joseph. That's not Gerald is that? Njengele. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. I'm just looking. Yeah. I'm looking at the far <laughs> side of the screen here. Yeah. What, what else we got there? Yeah, I've got Zelt Marais and I've got Toby Titus. That is our executive committee with, with those guys that you just mentioned now. Uh, so we've got the exco and then these are our coaching staff also with with, with the dignitaries that was at the at the service fantastic stuff so um great to see the pictures great yeah. to see the pictures of what was going on there yeah. um again you've you've you're one of the few guys in western Brothers rugby that have consistently stayed with the media process yeah. um what have you made of that on a personal note if you go back when we started with the whole media process yeah. of creating publicity and awareness and PR for club rugby. Yeah. And, and you came to those sessions that we were doing on Twitter and Facebook. Nolene, you were yeah. also there right from the beginning. How much of a difference did that make? Do you think, yeah, what, how do you see it from when we started that and five years later or six years later? Yeah, so no, uh, we, we, we're at the point now where if someone wants to get out the message out, um, like we're doing a thing for Mandela Day now in, in next week. 67 minutes for Mandela. Yeah, yeah well, we're doing it the whole day. So we're doing it the whole day yeah. whereby um, we just send out something. So the chairman, uh, Mr. Ruben Ruffel, he just decided on it. And then it was a m matter of moments when it went viral throughout our club. So Twitter, Facebook, the WhatsApp, uh, BBM, um, all these social media that you guys have shown us how to use, we have used and utilized it. Where do you think we were, do you think we, what do you think, do you think it's made a difference? 
Yeah. In, in what, I mean, practically, what, yeah, where no. do you think we would be now? What, what was the we would still be at flyers and waiting for the club games to happen <laughs> or someone on a bike delivering the, yeah. the newsletter to each uh, official. Um, so you enjoy it? Yeah, it saves on phone calls, it saves on emails. It's quick, it's easy, it's handy. You don't need to be at your office. But it still takes somebody to do it. Yeah, do, you enjoy, do you enjoy doing it at yeah. St. George's? Yeah, no, I love, I love doing it. I, love, I, I enjoy doing it. Um, each club needs needs a media liaison or a person to just have run you with come that. across i mean i know who some of them are but in your space have you especially like in the Heldenberg region or other clubs have you come across similar mindset of people at other clubs that are also tackling the media yeah yeah uh tariq van der ross uh, we yeah we he's been very active yeah, yeah. former strand pioneers former now strand, strand united strand united yeah, yeah so um but but then there aren't any they don't uh, it will always be your administrator or your secretary that will handle mm -hmm. the, this role um, or it would be your chairman or chairperson, but there's not a, a in the Aldeburgh region, there's no, St. George is the only one without, with, yeah, a media, yeah. with a media liaison. Yeah. All right, so uh, very exciting. And Nolina, as you said you earlier on, you guys have got your whole SMS yeah. system, you've yeah. SMS mm -hmm. the fans, you et cetera as well. Yeah. yeah, we've got a very active, I mean, um, Ilani Antonell is actively busy on the Twitter account. So if something happens on, on the game, in the game, they update the scores live. So. It's very nice, especially if you're not at the club and you people yeah. either away on business or whatever, and you can follow Twitter, you can immediately see, see what's what going on. It's not like right. waiting for that SMS to come through eventually yeah. when somebody I, remembers. I, I remember sitting in those boxes at Newlands or wherever way back in the day and people sitting there wanting to know, because they didn't go to the club game. That's right. Uh, what happened last night or whatever. Now it's just a, it's a Twitter stream of, yeah. of information. Yeah. People really sharing information. All right, let's look at Super League C. Um, Wraithby are on the top of the pile. They are sitting on 41 points. Franschuk United, Langa, Violet, Strand, Strand, uh, and Stelmko, Silver Tree, ALC, Snurlik is Manenberg. And in 14th place, it's Eerste Rafir. Now, this is the game that we're going to over the weekend, folks. It is Wraithby, and they are up against Eerste Rafir. It's going to be a cracker of a match. Uh, Eerste Rafir, um, R Linden, what do you make of Eerste Rafir? They're sitting a little bit low on the log yeah. here. Is it going to, are they going to be able to pull a Krafontein on the <laughs> Yeah, um, I think the guys at Easter of Fear would want to hope this. Um, I hope that. Um, they, there's a bit of, of, of a re rematch and a revenge on the Raithby side. The last time Easter of Fear um, uh, did uh, do a one over over Raithby, it was in 2011 when they won the, the Premier or the Division 1 got promotion and then um, so Wraithby are looking to, to set the record straight <laughs> and then Eastrofi is obviously not going to hand it to them you know okay. you would want that one K one club to say they were unbeaten but they lost against us so, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they can lift it eh? they, they can lift it on the day yeah they, I, I think I think on the day um, Eastrofi uh, Eastrofi should um, should uh, be good competition for Wraithby but I think Wraithby are on, on, on a roll so I just They're think that, yeah I think it'll be a good match a very good match yeah Right, folks, that's where we're going to be this weekend. It's Wraithby up against Estefir, home ground advantage for Wraithby. Make sure you come out and join us, and we look forward to seeing you there. We'll take an ad break. We'll take a look at some of the rest of the fixtures and the logs uh, in Western Province Club Rugby as they stand at the moment. Back in a sec. Evox Advanced Nutrition are the protein specialists. Get down to Discam now and get the Evox 2.2 kilogram Synergy Whey Protein for only 459.95. Was 569.95. You save 110 rand. Get the Evox 3D T2 now 179.95. You save 30 rand. Evox Creatine HCL now 259.95 or buy three for 519.90. Available at a Discam near you while stocks last. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Hi, I'm JP Nordia from K Rugby TV. Join me every Wednesday at 9 p.m. for the latest on rugby in Western Province. We focus on club rugby with selected match highlights, great tries, top interviews, the latest logs, results and fixtures, fantastic competitions, social media and fan interaction. Join me and our panel of rugby experts as Cape Rugby TV finally brings local rugby to the masses. It's Cape Rugby TV every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. right here on Cape Town TV. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Wistenberg, like the Tata Indigo Vista Ego from only triple nine per month and 72 months to pay. This includes a service, a roadside assistance plan, license, registration and number plates. Only at Tata Wistenberg Brackenfell. SMS the words Vista Ego to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. 
Welcome back, everybody. Yes, Cape Rugby TV, uh, Wednesday night. Let's quickly take a look at the rest of the logs there. We'll start off with the City League. It's Young Stars and Caledonian Roses. They're still on the top. Still quite a few games to go, folks, but we'll just bring you the logs anyway. Young Stars and Caddies leading in the City League. In the Southern League, Massey Pumalele and Young Wesleys are still on the top. And, of course, followed by Rocklands and Laguna. While in the uh, Northern League, it's Blue Jets, Clutisville, Blue Stars and Kylemore. And the Paul League. Now, this is where we started having some changes. Uh, Lower Paul Vineyards, Young Standards, Violets, Allendale, Paul Rangers, Riverstone, Simonium, Albion's, Young Gardens, Windmill United, and Peril United. Now, let's just take a quick break there. Um, obviously, folks, you're going to see now that there's going to be bottom six and top six. So the next time you look at the logs, you're going to see that Lower Paul Vineyards, Young Standards, Violets, Allendale, and Paul Rangers are going to be in the top A league, or if you want to call it the top strength. Now, strong strength versus strong, strong, strength versus strength. <laughs> They're in the top spot there. That's called the Paul League A side. And then in the, in the bottom uh, half, it's going to be uh, Riverstone, Simondium, Albion's Young Gardens, Windmill United, Peril United. Now, I think here we're going to start seeing some interesting competitions mm -hmm. because we're going to see who's going to come out in those, in those two formats. And I suppose this is a little bit like running a plate uh, yeah. a tournament where Peril United will be playing nobody stronger than Riverstones, as an example. Yeah. Um, and um, Paul and Rangers will be playing nobody uh, or at least lower Paul will be playing nobody weaker than a Paul Rangers, yeah. if we look at that. Yeah, but like on the day, like Morgan said, um, on the day, it's, it's, it's what you play. So, I mean, you won't have a case of, of a, a, a lower or a 15 position playing a first, so you'll know what the outcome would be. So you'd have fans pitch up for the game because they would want to see yeah, yeah. That, that near bounce, you know. For example, yeah. um, you would get in a, in a top, like a rematch of yeah. like the away fixture, home and away fixture that has been taken away. So you'll get that scenario again. Yeah. In the Simonsburg League, it's the Pumas, Fora, um, Excelsior, Lewandle, Fisanta Kral, Blue Stars, Constantia, Kaimandi, Lamotte, Languedoc, and Brampton. All right, let's take a look now at some of the fixtures that are over the weekend. Of course, there's a, a bit of a mixed match. In Super League A, we see uh, Helderberg are up against Bel Haar. Uh, they're playing at uh, Charles Morkel Stadium, the home ground advantage for ba Helderberg. False Band Hamiltons, um, as Morgan have told us already, we'll come back to this slide in a sec. Um, <coughs> Linden, False Bay, um, at least Helderberg and uh, Bellar, home ground advantage for Helderberg. Yeah. Haven't had the strongest of seasons, but uh, sort of equal par yeah. with, with the Bellar. How do you see this going? Yeah, I think um, I spoke with some of the guys from Helderberg asking them, uh, you know, obviously what their goal is. Always they're out of the, the 13, 14 and 15 position, but I think they are going for, for their top six. Yeah. Um, so they would want to pick up points where they can um, and obviously um, targeting uh, uh, teams where they can pick up a few points, yeah, um, yeah. where they can 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 get get closer to that top six um, as as they can. Okay, and then in uh, Super League B, it's Hands and Hearts and Salarians, Hamlets and uh, St George's. Uh, Peniel Villages take on Goodwood, Macassar takes on Young Peoples, and Brackenfell take on Cryfontaine. New Orleans, do we see a little bit of a um, uh, the, the vibe is going to kick in again this weekend? Yes, uh, is it starting? Because yes, we've all been terrified yeah. that club rugby is dying. Mm. Yeah. You know, oh, okay, we're back on. Are we back? Yes, no, yeah. it looks like they're back on. It's big games coming up this weekend. It's that Cryfontaine um, Brackenfell one will be wow. a good one to watch. Come that back ball, the real derby. The real derby, that one. Yeah, again, was I mean, said I'll break them. Yellow. That's the two teams. We, it's up for us when we come back from the yeah. from the break. That's our Brogan Falls, our first game, and then. And then Cryfontaine, our last home game, and then hands and arms to finish off the season. So. And then Linden and at St George's, uh, Hamlets. Yeah, uh, we're traveling. They are not a, they're not a walkover yeah. at all. Um, we, our head coach, Wilbur Krak, he, he hails from Mamre, so it's a bit of yeah. a personal battle on his side. But our supporters and Hamlets oh, supporters. Why he speaks so lekker Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, <laughs> <laughs> niemand praat dan lekker Afrikaans, jong. Ja, nee. Yeah, I yeah. It's, it's, of, it's of the 10 years that he spent in Poch, because he was at Pukka University. Oh, so that yeah, that, that's, I think that is where, where, where he picked up that. But he's, um, so then our fans and spectators, I just spoke to Nolin before before the show. I mean, the, this is going to be a good one. There's good banter, as with Falls Bear and, yeah. and, and, and um, Hamilton's. Um, it's going to be a good one. And it definitely will, will be one on the day. You can't predict it. Yeah. Um, no one would want to lose. <laughs> at, so still at, a couple of Mamre. close ones there, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the Super League C, as we said, is Wraithby up against Eersterafir. Langer take on Silverleaf. Franschuk up against Stelco and Paul take on Elsis River. Right, so those are, of course, uh, your fixtures over the weekend. We will see you at Wraithby as they take on um, uh, Eersterafir. It's going to be a cracker of a game, so make sure you get down to Wraithby. We know there's a lot of fans out at Eersterafir and Wraithby. And if you haven't got any games this weekend, then, you know, 
come and watch the game there as you see what exactly happens all right folks that is a wrap from us here at cape rugby tv we hope you have a fantastic rugby week and remember we are on facebook we want your photographs we want your tweets at cape rugby tv morgan newman thanks for joining me have a lekker rugby weekend and good luck thanks Abs. always good to be back on the show and Lyndon Julie's long overdue that you join us, my man, and uh, that people can put a, a face to the voice. <laughs> yeah, thanks, JP. Uh, thanks for having us. And then all the club rugby fans do enjoy your, your club rugby weekend. Um, it's going to be a good one. Like Nolene said, we're back on it, so we're definitely waiting for that heartbeat to start pumping again. <laughs> and Nolene, just a quickly, a, a couple of women's games this weekend? Yes, um, Unimol is playing um, bu Busy Bees. Yeah. I know Peniel's playing, um, I think they're playing Blue Jets, so it's, it's a tough competition. Who do you think is going to win the league in the women's division? It's a tight one as well. One. Yeah, last year right. it was a walk away, this year I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Nalene, thanks for joining us. We'll see you thanks again soon. Much. Thanks very much for having me. There we go, folks. Uh, K Rugby TV it is. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>